Welcome to our lesson about input and output VST connections. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology. In this lesson, we'll be picking up where we left off in our previous lesson. We were talking about how to set up Cubase to receive audio signals, and we set up our physical input and output ports. Now we need to connect our ports, the physical interface on the audio interface, to the Cubase virtual buses. You may be asking, what's a bus? A bus is like a virtual audio cable that carries a signal from one point to another inside your Cubase software. Buses don't bring any noise to your audio. There's no degradation of the signal. You can use buses individually, in stereo pairs, or in multi-channel groups. You must do this to get your recording and playback working. You can't get around this system. Okay, let's close the device setup dialog window. And let's go back to devices from the main menu strip and select VST connections. It's also available via the keyboard shortcut F4. The VST connections panel opens. This is where you connect your hardware ports to the Cubase virtual ports or buses. Because you need at least one output bus, you should configure your VST connections before you begin a new Cubase project. By default, the output bus is created for you, a stereo out using the correct device. And this lets me hear my playback. If the output isn't mapped to a port on the audio interface, you won't hear your playback. From the VST Connections panel, we group our ports, our physical connections, in different ways. For example, there are some times when you might need to use two inputs as separate mono connections, let's say for two separate microphones for your voice and guitar, or to use them together as a single stereo connection if, let's say, you're recording a stereo keyboard input. The VST Connections panel offers six tabs here. We've got inputs, outputs, group effects, external effects, external instruments, and studio. We'll be looking at some of these tabs in more detail later in this course. For now, let's just worry about creating an input and an output bus so we can start recording. Let's go back to the Inputs tab. Here's the bus that Cubase has created for us by default, a stereo in mapped to my M audio device using my two analog input ports. They are named just like I renamed them in my previous lesson. We, of course, can create our own buses as well. While I will need a stereo bus in for my keyboard, I also need a mono input bus for recording mono instruments like a guitar, bass, clarinet, my various drums, vocals, etc. Cubase offers us a list of presets too, and that's pretty handy, as for example, this option here will configure 24 mono inputs. We will have to connect them individually, but we don't have to create them. Let's return to the stereo in. And notice that once I changed, we are no longer connected to my audio interface. We click in the audio device cell and I choose my audio hardware. My ports are automatically assigned and that's because I've only got two inputs. If I had more analog inputs, I'd have to select them. Let's click on the add bus button. The add input bus dialog window opens. Let's open the configuration drop down menu and select mono. We've got quite a few other options available here. Stereo, LRCS, that's left, right, center sound, and that's a surround sound input, as well as many other types of multi-channel input. From this window, we can create as many buses as we need. Just click on the up and down arrow keys to adjust the number. OK. Now in the Audio Device column, select the audio device that you want to use for this bus. In the Device Port column, select the port on the audio device that you'll be using for this bus. I'll use Mic. I've just told Cubase where the sound is coming from. 
You can rename a bus by double-clicking on it. A rectangle appears around the name when you're able to edit it. The name you type here will be the bus name that you see in the input drop-down menu for each audio track. I'm going to call this bus Microphone. Mic for short. Press Enter to accept your new name, and you see your list of buses in the VST Connections panel on the Input tab. The first column has an icon that displays their configuration at a glance, whether mono, stereo, or surround. Let's take a look at the Outputs tab. Outputs are used to listen to what you've recorded. Once again, you can create your output buses manually or select them from a list of presets. Let's start from scratch and remove the default bus that Cubase created for me in case perhaps it wasn't configured correctly. Now, pressing Remove here won't delete the default bus. You'll actually have to right-click on it and select Remove Bus. Cubase prompts me with a warning. Bus Stereo Out is used in my project. Delete anyway? Yes, let's delete it. We add output buses just like we added the input buses a moment ago. Click on the Add Bus button. The Add Output Bus dialog window opens. Let's add a stereo output bus, quantity 1. And my new bus appears in the bus window. It's already assigned to the correct device and ports, but if you see that it's not connected or not assigned correctly, you can click in those cells to make modifications. If you want to listen to some output in mono, you can set up a mono bus. Let's right click on my stereo out. Set stereo out as main mix is selected. This means that our main output channel is assigned to this bus. My output ports were automatically assigned properly, but don't forget to do this in case they're not. Since we mainly listen to music as a stereo mix, all you really need is one stereo output. You can listen to music with more than two channels, for example, if you've got a surround sound setup. We can rename the bus just by double-clicking on it. A rectangle appears around the name when you're able to edit it. The name you enter here is the bus name available to you in the output drop-down menu for each audio track. There's a column here that we haven't looked at yet. It's called Click. This refers to the metronome click track that can play while you record. If you don't want any enabled click tracks to echo to this bus, toggle the click track off in the click column. We're going to be learning about the click track later on in this course. All right, we see our complete list of buses in the VST Connections panel on the Output tab. The speaker column displays their configuration, mono, stereo, etc. And let's close the VST Connections panel when we're finished. There's no need to click Apply or OK on this dialog window. And this concludes our lesson about setting up input and output VST connections. We are almost ready to begin a new Cubase project.